Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Hurry Up. I'm your host, Adam. Let's get into it. So, the New York Giants have started their offseason program early in April. They have now come up on their minicamp, and let's get into that. The first day was closed to the media, but you got some good reports. On Giants.com, gives you a, they do a great job. I had some pictures out there. It was great to see the guys back and getting into it and getting into football and getting getting going here with this new regime because I'm sure we're all excited. Of course, there's everything to do about the offseason, but the draft is coming up. But it's good to just see the team out there. And actually, finally, media access. They got to go on the field and be there. That's good stuff, right? Getting the media back there. You're going to get great content when that happens because the media is going to actually get to talk to their guys. You get to see their body language. Um, and you get to grill guys a little bit more. It's a little easier to ask a question to somebody when you're, you know, when you're in front of them. So, you know, uh, we'll see how that goes, but I'm excited. Brian Dable actually addressed the media today on the second day of training camp. And uh, there's been a pretty, uh, mini camp, excuse me, training camp, mini camp, excuse me. It's been a pretty good attendance, pretty good showing. So uh, he's been pleased with that. His message is pretty clear on what he wants these guys to do, just improve, get better every day, and, you know, basically, um enjoy what you're doing right and it's it's been great to hear the players say that the atmosphere is different here it's a little bit loose now i don't know if that's going to work but we'll see you know you, you've got to let these things manifest you know if i, I you, you gave joe judge and his message a chance you got to give this guy uh, a chance as well now we can get into things later on down the season but so far so good for Brian Dable. I think he's handled himself well. I think he's not giving the media much soundbite. He's just coach speak. That's what it is. You know, improving every day, getting better every day, blah, blah, blah. Nothing nothing too sexy about that, right? But now he got brought up on attendance. And obviously, there's a certain gentleman who is not here for the attendance. Uh, and that's Canaries, Tony. Um, you see, you see the atmosphere that's going on, right? Everyone's there. Leonard Williams, who was walking around with Michael Strahan, that was pretty cool. Always love to see alumni there, especially guys like Jesse Armstead, who I grew up with. Michael Strahan, both those boys grew up with. Good to see him spreading a message and and kind of showing showing it's how it's done. So it, it was good to see some of the the players there. Canary is not being there. I want to say this before we go down that road. I want to preface it with this. I don't agree with what he's doing, but the NFLPA agreed to this type of practice and these type of voluntary workouts. So you can't be mad when a man, when a player makes a choice that he's making. Does it look bad? Yes. Should he be doing it? Probably not. Should he be there with his new teammates? Yes. Right? Getting the new playbook and everything like that. And even Brian Dable said as much. You know, he hasn't gotten the playbook yet. So, yeah, you want him to be there. That, that is clear as day. But as it is written in the NFL playbook, I mean, NFL PA, you know, guideline, this is what they agreed upon. And so if, if, if this was mandatory and he's missing it, we'd have a bigger problem. But he's only exercising what is being offered to him. Now, whether or not the advice is being given to him by the Players Association, by his agent, I don't know. You know, and, and quite frankly, I'm not his dad or his mom or anybody in his life to tell him what to do. So, you know, yeah, it's a bad look. You just better believe that when you come to play on Sunday, you better be ready because every little thing you he does from now on will be scrutinized. So when they do have mandatory minicamp in the next few weeks, he better not miss. And if he does, he better not come out and get injured or have cleat problems or anything like that. He better be running all routes. He better be healthy because last year we, we all know he had a tumultuous season from injuries to plays to all this nonsense, right? So, you know, and it's funny because there's two big storylines going into this into this camp for offense. It's Daniel Jones, and now it's Kadarius Tony, And Kadarius Tony, we hope, all Giant fans, we hope, I, well, most Giant fans, I don't know, I can't speak for everybody, but we hope that he's going to be good. And we hope he's going to be electric. Right, because Odell Beckham Jr. Even though we were losing, man, that boy was electric. That guy was dynamite. You know, dynamite. He get him on the field, boom, gone. You know what I'm saying? So we're hoping that that's what Kadarius Tony can bring to this offense. You know, and and bring to this team some pizzazz. And, and from what I'm hearing, there's some play formations that 
are going to be different than last year. So hopefully more exciting. Will it generate more points? We'll see. Um, but but he's the big topic of discussion when really we should be focusing on the draft, right? And and, and those picks and, and what's going to happen there and not worry about a guy just missing voluntary minicamp. Yeah, I know. People are going to say, well, he does not into football and this, that, and the other thing. I don't really care. I agree with everything you're going to say about that and that he should be there. I'm just telling you what he's allowed to do. You know, I can't be mad at some... I can be mad that he's not there, but at the end of the day, if... Somebody said, this is not mandatory, and it doesn't reflect on how we judge you or anything like that. What are you going to do? You know, you're 23, you're down in Florida, you're working out. I mean, he's at the beach, you know what I'm saying? Like, making rap videos. I mean, heck, you know, that's a heck of a life. Not my, not what I'm doing. Not for me. I love football. I'd probably be grinding with my teammates, but, you know, that's him. But, and again, he's not doing anything that is not you know, not put in the writing of the NFLPA guidelines. So, yes, while it's a bad look and the entire um, team is, is basically there getting to know the, the coaching staff, you know, it, it's a bad look. But it, it is also his choice to be there. It is voluntary. Again, we can we can be angry. We can be a little frustrated. But right now, you have to, right now, Leave it alone. He hasn't gotten in trouble like a certain first round pick that was in the offseason. DeAndre Baker. We need to not go in to him. He's getting in trouble before the season even starts going to jail and shit. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. And it had to come out. Fired up sometimes. So right now, Kadarius hasn't done all that. He hasn't gotten in trouble yet. Yet, hopefully. Hopefully he doesn't. But like he hasn't gotten in the police blotter. Carl Banks, used, I mean, excuse me, Bill Parcells used to say, yo. You guys go out and do whatever you want to do. Just don't have to end up in the newspaper or in the police, in the police, you know, arrest reports. And that was a good off season because obviously you can't control every guy and what they're going to do. But social media and all this stuff now, it feels like everybody can be everywhere and do everything and want to, want to, you know, be in everybody's lives. And that's not what we should do as fans. We should kind of just as fans be excited for the draft. Say, you know what, this guy's going to do what he's going to do. Let's see what happens when it's mandatory. Let's see what happens when training camp comes in. Because I guess, guess what? If you thought he was walking, if you thought he was walking on eggshells last year, he will be walking on nails this year. If he don't perform, he comes out injured or anything bad of that nature. So, I just want, I just want to give both sides of it. The side I'm on is the side that most people are going to be on. He needs to be there. All I'm saying is we got to look at both sides of it. Even if we are mad, these are something that he's allowed to do. And you you shouldn't be you, – you can be upset because of the look, because of how it's going down and what may be the cause and how it is looking. But you can't be mad because at the end of – you can't be mad at him fully because at the end of the day, these are what – the Players Association agreed upon, so he's only doing what he's a lot, uh, what's in his right to be done. Again, we may not agree with it, but he's not doing anything wrong. So I just want to get that out there, you know. But hey, the draft is coming up in you know less than almost nine days, almost less than a week. We're very close. It's very exciting. Um, there's gonna be a lot of smoke and mirrors coming out. Don't believe all of it, but you know, hold on to some of it. Because the more rumors come out, the truth will eventually also spill out. Because guess what? The more rumors you put out, the, the simple truth that comes out, people are going to get it conjumbled with the rumors. So keep your ear out. Sift through the garbage. You know, it's going to be a fun time. We all know where the Giants are probably going with their fifth pick, and that's probably right tackle. And and focus on that. Don't let Kadarius Tony and whatever he's doing or not doing affect this time of year. It's a fun time of year. It's the time where the Giants are on the clock. It's an event. It's the draft. It's it's a whole spectacle. And and so enjoy that. Take the next nine days and, and don't worry so much about the, the receiver and him not showing up. Because guess what? That's going to catch up with him. The New York media is ready. They got their arrows pointed. And he was a little kraus with the media last year. You know what I'm saying? He kind of gave it to him. So, you know, his target is on his back. So, just wanted to say that, um, 
this is another edition of the Hurry Up Look For Me on Premium Takes, show that I do with uh, Mac the Giant fan, Zion Zenith, Jeffrey the Giant fan. Um, we have a show, the four of us, we're the four horsemen of, of YouTube. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, we have a show, we do Premium Takes, we talk about all things sports. Um, obviously, we have the Hurry Up, and then there's also the NFC East Roundtable with Mac the Giant fan. He and I will be doing... Uh, basically a, a recap of the NFL draft for the NFC East teams and giving you our previews and thoughts going into the offseason on what we think might be happening and, and some of the fun nuggets that we will find. So look out for all that content. This has been another edition of the Hurry Up. I'm your host, Adam. Let's go!